I actually came up here for the, uh, uh, the Constitution Day, uh, the rally they had where Sheriff Mack was uh, the keynote speaker. Oh. ...with Oath Keepers, and they, involved, they listed the fact that Stephanie and I had exercised our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. You know, the Oath Keepers is all about protecting the Constitution and defending it. The ECYF is all about destroying it under nothing but false pretenses and false allegations. Doug, my name is Douglas Ronald Millar, M-I-L-L-A-R, and I'm here uh, from California. I flew in here uh, right Monday morning because I talked to the family and found out what was going on here and decided that they needed more help. I'm a full-time investigator as a PI for the last 18 and a half years it's my 17th state, six trips to D.C. I've never charged my investigations this full time for the last 18 and a half years. I've got dozens and dozens of nationally prominent references. I'll be glad to give you a list of a dozen I've had for the last, uh, well, since uh, 94 I put it out. So what are you doing to help the family? Well, number one, I came in to learn the facts, obviously, because you can't do a good investigation to learn the facts. To be honest with you, I haven't had time to even do a lot of that as much as I was. Uh, that's offensive to me. I spent 27 years in the old police department, you know, right over in Massachusetts. And we, we spent a career, most everybody that I know, I mean, Dave Freeman from uh, Las Vegas Metro, you know, our career was based on making sure we protected kids if nothing else. And it's offensive to me that they would make that association that because I'm associated with Old Keepers now, that whole thing, that career that I had, it, it, it was meaningless. You know, you and if you want to talk about yourself and your affiliation with Oath Keepers and why you're out here today. Okay. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Celia Hyde. I'm a, I'm a former uh, chief of police from Massachusetts, law enforcement agent for 30 years, and now I'm a board of director member for the National Oath Keeper Association. I'm also the Massachusetts State Ch Chapter President, and today we're here to basically um, stand up for our First Amendment rights. As you may know, we were put in an affidavit that uh, alleged uh, a reason for a child to be taken away from his mother and father. Um, and we are uh, adamantly against that. Association is, uh, you're free to do that under the First Amendment. And therefore, uh, we want to make sure people know that uh, we're not letting them get away with it. Can we stand like a block the road keeper signs? I don't like DC right out myself. Chris! No, you're fine. Just getting a very natural fact of going here. So, as, as, a, as a returning serviceman, um, how do you feel about these people who want to classify you and your support of Oath Keepers as some kind of threat or terrorist, domestic terrorism? How does that make you feel as someone who's, you know, put their life on their line for the country? Um, it's very disrespecting, I guess. I'm, I mean, when I originally joined, I thought, you know, I'd be on the side of good, fighting, you know, protect the rights and stuff. And six years I was in, I just got more and more involved with, like, the liberty movement and realized that it was pretty much the other way around, that the government's working to infringe on our rights. So, How did you come to that conclusion? I mean, how did you come to that realization while you were in the service? Well, it's probably an answer a lot of people have, but uh, my... I just randomly decided to read uh, The Revolution by Ron Paul, and then that just opened up everything else. And I just did more research. I went to, I go to the Daily Paul a lot. I went to InfoWars a couple times. And, yeah, I just try and support it whenever I can. Great. Looking for me? <laughs> yeah, I'm just catching everything here. Good sure. sign. At this point, I am making more of a steward. <laughs> it's kind of hard to prove negatives. 
Who are you? Oh, my name's Andy Steele. I'm from. Uh, I have a little blog called uh, America 20 XY. Now, um, we, we, what, what do you? Because I don't know the law and I don't know what can be accomplished. What do you expect to be uh, to be accomplished? Do you expect them to retract that from the affidavit and an apology? Well, we'd hope so. We we we, we give our demand letter this morning, and our hope is is that um, rather than us having to go through the litigation process and filing a lawsuit, that they'll simply retract it, realize they made a mistake. Um, and being charitable, and hope, hoping it was just simply a mistake, and that this is not proper. And I'm hoping the judge will realize the same thing and amend the order to exclude mention of the, of the organization. You know, the political affiliations have nothing to do with uh, CPS. It should be entirely about the children's welfare and not about the, the politics of the parent. That's our, that's our position. And so that's why we're here, and we had all of our uh, current serving and, and former uh, police officers and sheriffs um, sign that demand letter, our, our leadership on behalf of all of the police officers in our organization, many thousands of them. And so their main point is, you know, this is this is this is an illegitimate politicization of CPS, and it's something that should not be done at all. And in this case, in particular, it's a it, you know demonization of oath keepers, and, and for the police officers in particular who have seen abuse of children and have worked you know in that process, it's especially a slap in the face to insinuate that associating with them is somehow itself endangerment of children. Which is what it says. You know, it's, it's, it's listing association with oath, with oath keepers as being one of the reasons um, argued in the affidavit by the CPS worker for taking the baby away from the parents. And then, unfortunately, that was adopted by the judge as the judges um, in, in whole, as the judge is finding the facts. Look at the order. It says, you know, reasons given, and it says, it says, see affidavit. So the judge, you know, finding the fact of the court. And it's a C affidavit. So the court unfortunately adopted the entire affidavit as the reasons. And certainly there are other allegations in there, but our point is, and why we're here, is that among those should never be the political associations of the parent. It doesn't belong there. So, do you think you'll be successful with them seeing all of us standing out here today? Um, or I, I would hope so. I think, I, think it, I think it's a good chance of it. I mean, Will Daily's been covering this. Uh, Drudge picked it up. It's even been picked up on on, um, on Glenn Beck's Blaze website, his new new web, his new news website. So it's getting it's getting some legs. It's getting some attention. And my hope is that that little bit of public pressure like that. You know, positive pressure in the court of public opinion will uh, make them realize they made a mistake, and that they're you know the best thing they can do is just remove it from it. You know, just take us out. That's all we're asking for. And, and you know, and hopefully they will not do it again. And I would hope that the state legislature then takes a step of increasing their oversight and taking a good look into why it was that this happened to make sure it doesn't happen again. Because you now, from what I've read from the director of the New Hampshire State. Um, uh, DCYF, DCYF office is that she's a bit unrepentant. She says, well, you know, we give the judge all the information we think the judge might want to hear and what the judge decide was relevant. So what that really says is we're going to throw everything against the wall, including your political affiliations, which have no bearing at all on anything, and we'll let the judge decide whether the judge wants to use that. So what's that mean? It means that the judge doesn't like a disfavored political group, then now the judge gets to go, well, you know, in this case, I don't like these people. I'll go ahead and, and use that as one of my reasons. So that's not that's not legitimate, and you know, it's unconstitutional. What it is is targeting of targeting of speech, and will lead to a, a chilling of speech, which is why it's unconstitutional. Do you think the mainstream media has any complicity in at least creating this climate where people like the Oath Keepers can be demonized as domestic terrorists and playing that up so that it gets into the psychology of the people that write these things into the affidavits? I mean, what what is your comment on that? Yes, yes, I think they are complicit in it. And I think that you can look at non-government organizations such as the Southern Poverty Law Center and the ADL who feed that. And they, they influence the media and they also influence directly law enforcement across the country and in DHS in particular. And one of the reasons why we're here, uh, aside from the, the plain on its face unconstitutionality of this, is also that we know that Southern Poverty Law Center now sits on the working group for countering violent extremism in DHS. They're part of the panel. Their CEO is sitting on the panel as advising DHS on how to train local uh, law enforcement and also local social workers. When you look in the look in the uh, it's on our website, openers.org. You look at our website there, openers.org. You'll see the the PDF of that report, and in it it says we recommend that they utilize every level. This, this is what um, the working group is saying to DHS. Utilize every level of society, including social workers and mental health workers, to combat violent extremism. So basically, what they're saying is that they want DHS to do precisely what is being done in this case is to use family services 
to fight violent extremism. And who do they consider to be violent extremism? Well, anybody they want to put on their list. And among those groups on their list is my organization, Oath Keepers, which is just outrageous and absurd. It's, it's an organization of current serving police officers, uh, military, and also retired police and military, um, all of us who swore the same oath. And our only mission is to make sure that the current serving uh, keep their oath and, and refuse to violate unconstitutional laws. So we're not out there advocating imminent violence. That means that we're not into the territory of unprotected speech. We're not in the territory of committing crimes. And so it's all protected speech. So they want to list protected speech and association as a reason for taking someone's kid away. That's just patently unconstitutional. It's, it's amazing to me I even have to argue this with anybody. And so I know we will prevail. If we go to a, a um, actual litigation on this, to a trial and a, and a, a lawsuit on First Amendment grounds, we will win. So I'm completely convinced of that. This is core political speech. My organization is out there advocating uh, using First Amendment uh, freedom of speech to advocate obedience to the Constitution and to advocate you know, simply fidelity to our highest law of the land. That is core political speech. So anybody who engages in that or associates with us is engaged in core political speech. And that's the most protected speech you can have under First Amendment jurisprudence. So. Thank you. Yeah. The, this is one of the um, disturbing systematic problems, systemic problems with CPS, is they give no consideration to, to that critical period of development. You're right. Yeah. Why isn't there an instant order to return the baby to the well? I don't know. That's a judge. You know? So, you know. Where's the baby? You, probably what the outcome was. We don't know the official outcome. And uh, apparently there's, you know, kind of a gag order on it. I don't even know much about that. All I know is, is that they were very happy when they left. And so that's a positive outcome for them. Um, still open question about the whether there's going to be a retraction or a modification of any of the paperwork when it comes to us, or even if that's even necessary. I have no idea what happened inside there. Um, if the whole thing is tossed out, then that, that's it, it's done. So that's probably all, all we'll pursue too. We'll have to sit down and think about it. We don't know. But I want to thank you all for coming out. I think it was important, whatever the outcome, that we stand up um, in, in, in main part for the right of all people to due process and also all of us, our freedom of speech and association. No one should ever have to worry that their political affiliations will be used against them to take their kids away. So that's the bedrock principle that we were here to defend um, along with due process. So I just want to thank all of you for that. Right on. Um, but it certainly never hurts to stand up and make sure that those who would like to silence you out there, not saying necessarily this organization, but um, for example, Southern Poverty Law Center and others out there who would like to suppress our speech, would love to use just this kind of mechanism to chill our speech. It's good to stand up, let them know you're not afraid to associate, that in fact the more they push and try to suppress your freedom of speech, the more likely you are to go and join Oath Keepers, for example. We've had a spike in membership over the last three days. And every time they, every time they attack us, every time anything like this happens to us, it only helps us. And I think that's a testament to the, the American people. We're not third world peasants. We don't let people make us afraid to speak out. We don't cower in fear. We step out in public. So I think that all of you should be commended for taking that stand today. Thank you.